Which shoe is better to hoop in? The Nike Kyrie 8 Infinity or the Under Armour Curry Flow 9? Today we're putting the newest models from Kyrie Irving and Steph Curry's shoe lines head to head to see how they compare. But really quick, if this is your first time checking us out, feel free to drop a follow or subscribe and give this video a like. We would greatly appreciate that. So starting off with the box and the price, the Kyrie Aids get some Kyrie text inside of an oval pattern. Then you're gonna have that sideways infinity sign that also doubles as the number eight for the model. And then switching it over, the Curry Nines are gonna get sort of like a matte white box with Steph's new player logo on the top and like a metallic gold color. I'll kind of get into what his logo means here in a little bit more in a second because it honestly is pretty sweet. But as for pricing, the Kyrie Aids are gonna retail for $130, which does line up with last year's Kyrie 7. And the Curry Nines are going to be a little bit higher retailing for $160, but no price jump to worry about on those either. So doing a quick rundown on the appearance for these shoes and starting off with the colorways, today we're checking out the Nike Kyrie 8 Infinity Aluminum versus the Under Armour Curry Flow 9, we believe. So starting off with the Kyrie 8, this is going to have a similar look to most other Kyries in his line, at least in the sense that, I mean, the 8s are going to be more of a mid-top design. Pretty much all of his shoes, aside from like the models designed to be specifically low, like the Kyrie 4 or the Kyrie 5 low, they've all kind of followed that same mid-top structure. But these look a little bit more like the Kyrie 6s with Nike giving them, you know, more of a curved midsole. 7s had like a shark tooth design in that same spot. And then the waves built into the heel in this model are really clean. And this specific colorway is going to get an hourglass look to the tongue. So I am actually, you know, pretty big fan of the appearance for these eights. I personally like them a lot more than the sevens, but now switching it over to the Curry Flow 9. This is Steph's second basketball shoe since kind of taking over his own role within the brand, kind of branching off a little bit to create kind of his own line. So up until the seven model, it was just, you know, a lot more Under Armour branding, but last year's Curry Flow 8 kind of marked a new way that his shoes and like his product are released just kind of branded within Under Armour. So, I mean, the Curry Flow 9 is going to be the second addition to this new line, if you want to call it that. But along with that, you're going to get a whole new player logo. And personally, I think it's really sick. So if you follow the design, you're going to see the S and the C kind of mixed in there for his initials, which is, you know, what they do for pretty much every player. But it's also meant to resemble like flashing the three-pointer sign, which Steph gets to do pretty often, being the league's all-time three-point make leader now. And then that extra mark kind of above the design is even there just to represent the high wing on the court. So, I mean, I'm sure not everyone probably loves it, but I think it was a really cool change. And I just, you know, I prefer it more than his generic look that he had with Under Armour, just the S and the C. I mean, I think that looks a little bit better, but... So the first thing to stick on me after, now we can actually get to the model itself. The first thing from this model to stick out to me is the tongue. It was like, you know, it's gonna have like a patch on there with some curry branding. On some models, like the first ones I tested out, it was like kind of suede in that area. These get more of like, you know, a patent, like a glossy feel, but I mean, it's gonna run pretty high up the shoe. You can actually kind of tell whenever they're especially not on your foot. You can just see how, how high that tongue runs up, but there's also gonna be a pull tab attached to the top. That's something that's a little bit different, but honestly, I kind of like it. And then another thing is this upper is going to be like a crisscross or like a weave pattern. I think that's pretty cool. And around the heel, you get, you know, some lines going on in the midsole, which, you know, displays the only Under Armour branding pretty much that there is on the shoe. It's kind of faintly built into the midsole on the backside. And I guess, you know, it does show up on the bottom and the outsole too. But honestly, I'm a really big fan of what Under Armour has kind of done and is doing within Curry's line right now. I just think the shoes continue to look really solid. And obviously, I'm big on the Nike Carry 8 too for the appearance. But now let's go ahead and see how each of these shoes hold up on the court. So now I'll break down more of the tech specs and talk about, you know, the performance side for each of these shoes. So starting off with the cushioning on the Kyrie 8, that's definitely one of the bright spots on this model. I mean, these are going to come packed with more cushioning features that just don't always show up in Kyrie's line. So Nike used a zoom unit in the heel, but in the forefoot, you're going to get a zoom strobe setup that is just spring loaded. Like you can feel it compress with every single step and jump. And that leads to really nice impact protection on any type of landing. Like the cushioning is something I knocked a little bit on the Kyrie 7s, but this is a step forward in my opinion for sure but now checking out the curry nines these followed suit with the curry eights and went with the ua flow foam design for the cushioning and you know these are still going to be pretty soft but the immediate the immediate feeling is going to be a little bit more stiff than the Kyrie's. and i mean it is going to require some additional break-in time i feel like because you know the more i've played in the curry nine so far the more they've started to loosen up but the responsiveness is still really nice and they're still going to be better than you know a lot of shoes out there like the impact protection has still been solid i think the curry nines do have a really nice on court feel it does help that they are super light to play in, but the Kyrie 8s absolutely crushed this category too. Like cushioning is super nice on those. For the materials and the support, the Kyrie 8s are going to use textiles covering most of that upper, and that's just to help keep the shoe lightweight and breathable. 
And then you're gonna get some nicer materials kind of on the back half of the shoe near the ankle. That black patch is more of a leather-like feel. And I was saying, like I was saying earlier, that's gonna resemble, you know, the Kyrie 6 a little bit more so than the Kyrie 7, which was pretty much just textiles covering from front to the back of the shoe. And the support is another highlight on the Kyrie 8 for a few different reasons. So the upper doesn't give on any like hard movements, but these black straps that run under the laces, then also on the outside where the laces feed through, those are like some black wings there to mark out a strap. It's gonna run behind your heel and just tighten your foot into the shoe. And it's also gonna run forward around your toes just to pull your entire foot into the design. You can even see where it's marked out if you follow that, you know, blue line. You can see where it begins and ends if you follow that blue stripe or that blue strip that just kind of runs along the toe box. So, I mean, Kyrie's line has never really struggled with support, and that continues on here. And then now for the Curry Flow 9s, these are going to have a UA Warp Upper, which has technology meant to provide enhanced comfort and control throughout all of your basketball movements. And along with that, you're going to get a breathable mesh tongue just to allow for some good ventilation on this model. And I really do like the weave model that they use on this upper. Like, I think I pointed it out in the appearance section, but it gives these a really clean look. And the Curry 9 feels a lot different compared to the 8s. Like, on this year's model, your foot sits really secure within the shoe like whenever you slide these on like it feels like once your foot is all the way in it's just like automatically locks into the design i did like that i think part of that is going to be you know more so because of this molded collar like on the eights you had more of a mesh and like a bendy feel the curry nine is a little bit more filled in on the back half i think it just gives you a more secure feel around your ankle i definitely like that and i do think that the curry nines they did improve in the support category to stack up nicely with the Kyrie eights i mean i like the knit design that they used on the on the curry eights last year but there was a little bit more gift to the upper i think the shoe mold just on the curry nines does a better job at keeping your foot from sliding around otherwise the Kyrie shoes i mean they'd probably you know be stacking up a lot worse compared to the Kyrie eights in this section but another good aspect for both of these models is going to be the weight with both of them landing on the lighter side the curry eights weigh 400 grams for a size 10 and a half and the curry nines are only going to weigh 350 grams for the same size that's actually the lightest shoe that i've ever played in i just did a top five lightest shoes on the market and these actually top that list but both of these models are really easy to move around it on the court so you have to like that to finish off with traction, Nike went with a data-driven pattern on the Kyrie 8, but it does have a better flow than like last year's model in my opinion. Like this is gonna be closer to a traditional herringbone pattern setup after last year's Kyrie 7 was, you know, a little bit more sporadic. I didn't really love that. And then the outsole is gonna extend out a little bit from that inner pattern where like you can kind of see the break where that lightning bolt design is. I just thought that was a little bit strange to have one part kind of compressed into the shoe a little bit more. But I actually bought this pair with an XDR outsole, which is just some more durable rubber. So I won't have to worry about like you know the durability quite as much i do like that and honestly i wasn't in love with how the traction played on last year's Kyrie sevens but it does feel better on this year's Kyrie eight model in my opinion but now looking at the curry nines there's no other way to put it that is hands down the best aspect for the shoe these get a ua flow outsole for under that under armor describes as durable i haven't had any issues on my curry eights that did use the same stuff but i don't know if i'd call them durable more so just like for outdoor use i don't know that i trust it because the foam does feel a little bit soft but i mean most other shoes with most other shoes and brands i am a pretty harsh critic of just like you know more random traction patterns but the grip on these is just so nice it doesn't even matter like the last two shoes in curry's lines fed some of the better grip on the court that i've ever felt i mean they do collect dust a little bit but i mean they're so sticky that just you know wiping them has worked for me every single time but to finish off with sizing i went true to size on both models and the length is perfect on both but the curry nines are a little bit on the narrow side they have a you know a slightly tighter fit so just keep that in mind so for the final ratings and starting off with the appearance, I mean, Steph is my favorite player and I love his shoe, but I can't lie, I do rock with the Kyrie 8. So I'm gonna keep the session as a tie. As for cushioning, that is a spot that, you know, the Curry 9s didn't measure up quite as well this year, but the Kyrie 8s, they play really nice and they have that like trampoline in the forefoot is what it feels like. So I'm gonna go back to Kyrie's line here. For materials, I think both Under Armour and, you know, Nike made some effort in making sure that both of these shoes feel quality. Like, there's not really a clear way to lean, so I'm going to keep that section as a tie. As for the support, you're going to have straps on the Kyrie 8 that feel really great, but I'm actually really impressed with how the Curry 9s play for this category. Like, they hold up well, especially for a low top design. There's no heel slippage, anything like that. The upper doesn't move either, so I'm just going to go with a tie for support too. But for traction, it's pretty easily going to the Curry 9s. That's not to say the Kyrie 8s are bad, because they definitely aren't, but I mean, they just aren't, there isn't quite as much grip compared to the Curry 9s. So, I mean, this is actually a really tough one, but I am gonna go with the Nike Kyrie 8 Infinity as the better shooter hoop. 
This one does hurt my heart, but I mean, there are some really nice qualities on this year's Kyrie 8, most notably being the cushioning and the support. The Currys are a little bit more expensive and the cushioning did take a small step back, but I mean, both of these shoes are really solid performers. So kind of just pick the one that meets the categories you're, mo you're more fo focused on, but just more worried about and kind of go from there because in my opinion, you can't really go wrong with either of these models. Thank you guys for taking some time to watch. If you want to buy the Nike Kyrie 8 Infinity and you want to support our channel, just click the link here on screen, or we have links for both shoes down below or in our bio, so feel free to check that out. But until next review, I'll find it from Shoewear. Peace.